What's up guys, Devin here from American Aquarium and I want to talk about aquarium disease prevention. This video is going to pair our article listed on American Aquarium, the prevention step by step of what's best to prevent aquarium fish disease. And of course it all starts with good husbandry. The general rule of thumb is that you want to try to be able to get smaller water changes instead of doing a full large water change on your aquarium. Smaller water changes means less shifts in parameters. About a 20% water change is advised, but this also means that you will then want to get your filtration set up in such a way that you have a high amount of biological filtration, which will then convert the toxic ammonia and nitrite to nitrate and handle the load that's in the aquarium so you don't need these large water changes. For the filtration, it's a good idea that you have redundant filters. So you have a high amount of filtration, but you also have redundant filters so that if something happens to one filter, you still have a high amount of biological filtration in another filter. And then also when you go to clean, you're cleaning one filter at a time and then clean the next filter the next time so then that way you're guaranteeing high amounts of biological filtration and you're never losing that load. Then it comes down to using good clean water. So if we're using city water, we want to make sure it's dechlorinated. If we're using well water, we want to make sure that it's not too hard or has impurities like heavy metals in it. And then if you're using something like spring water, RODI water, you want to make sure that it is remineralized. We'll come back to remineralization as this is a very important key to prevention. Another good general rule of thumb for good husbandry is to not overfeed, plus also use quality foods. Lower quality foods, one of the major reasons not to use them is that they are not as digestible. So the fish will take in the food, but much of it's being passed through the fish and not even being utilized by the digestion and is just being passed right back into the aquarium. So it actually adds more to the load of the aquarium that now needs to be filtered out. There's also lots of work about what good quality food can do for the fish itself, keeping the immunity boosted, giving it energy, and ultimately giving it best health long term. It's super important in freshwater aquariums that a KH and a GH reading are in check. A lot of people will focus on pH and think that they need to hit a target pH. What's been proven is that you actually start with a pH that comes from your water source, but more importantly is to keep the pH from your water source stable. And this is done through the KH alkalinity reading. If you keep a certain level between three, five, even seven sometimes, a KH of that reading will actually stabilize the pH. Having an unstable pH is one of the harshest conditions a fish can live in the GH of a freshwater aquarium is one that is very not known but becomes one of the most important. GH are your minerals like calcium, potassium, magnesium and these are super important electrolyte minerals that are meant for osmoregulation of the fish. If you have a low GH reading or even sometimes you can have a high GH reading but these minerals be depleted of their electrical charge, it is harming the fish's osmoregulation. So it's very important, most of the time, you wanna be constantly dosing these GH minerals. Very important to keep GH and KH in check. And you know, lighting can also play a role in aquarium health. There's certain light that actually boosts the immunity of fish. It's also used in human health where certain nanometers of light have been proven to enhance mood. Same for an aquarium. And on the flip side of that, there's types of light that actually add to the overall oxidation level of the aquarium, which you do need oxidation, but it needs to be in moderation. And this actually goes into the whole topic of aquarium redox. This is a very in-depth subject on how to maintain the best aquariums. And of course, we have more information about that in the description below. Last point about husbandry. You know, there is a thing called too much care. We can have our hands in the aquarium too much, too many water changes, too large of water changes, cleaning out our good bacteria too often, and not allowing and establishing a good ecosystem for the aquarium. 
So it's very important to have husbandry, but not too much husbandry. This takes us into the next key point of having a quarantine tank. This is having a separate tank for when there's disease issues that need to be treated in a separate tank and not in the display. And it's also a good idea for new arrivals from the fish store to go in this quarantine tank for say up to four to six weeks. A lot of people will skip the quarantine process. Along with a quarantine tank, there should be certain medications that are kept on hand. Now this may differ from who you ask, and I'm not gonna go into each specific medication we would recommend. We do have a very detailed description in the prevention article below, but it is a very good idea to have first aids on hand, antibiotics, and other like parasite treatment type medications on hand for when the issue happens. I wanna briefly touch on that there is a point where you wanna consider not treating a fish. A fish could be older in age, have weaker genetics, and just the treatment alone could be harder on the fish than allowing them to naturally bounce back with natural remedies, making sure parameters are in check, using electrolytes constantly is huge. But if you have these things in place, a lot of times fish can heal naturally and you provide them with just a comfort of life of taking care of them but not treating. The last aspect of good aquarium disease prevention is having an aquarium sterilizer. This is a debated topic if they're really needed. A lot of people will think of them as just clarifiers and there is science to being able to get actual sterilization which is bacterial through virus control versus just clarification. We have other information, other videos about how to actually achieve this sterilization. So for the most part, that includes our talk about aquarium disease prevention. We have more detailed information in the description below. Take a look if you want to know the hows and whys of what we recommend, what to keep on hand. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching our videos, taking a look at our articles. I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye.